who was your teacher, um, David Weiss Halivni? So David Weiss Halivni actually took the opposite view, right? He thinks he always respected the Rotary Shonim, and he was the one who encouraged me to write on the Rotary Shonim because when he went to school, David Weiss Halivni was in High Berlin under Rabbi Huttner, and he decided to go into academia. And uh, Ravuda said, if you go into academia, you're going to do academic work in the Talmud, why don't you devote trying to understand the Jewish academics, the orthodox academics, the orthodox Wissenschaft, Chumat Israel, the Rotary Shonim. And Halivni never did that, so I was the one in charge of doing it. But Halivni took the opposite. So he respected Halivni, he said Halivni is a big Talmudist, but Halivni had an agenda, a political agenda, and Halivni takes the extreme opposite. The Talmud was not proclaimed the Talmud was never organized by Ravashi and Abai and etc. So the, his view is the Talmud were traditions learned in Babylonia, but when the Babylonian Amorai move, uh, movement, right, I'll say, dwindled just because there were persecutions, there were plagues, etc., they realized that this was going to be lost. So there were people after the Amorai, all post Amorai period, from the year 540, give or take, called the Stabaim. The Stabaim are the unsung, unknown heroes of the Talmud. They go ahead and they look at the traditions and they try to reconstruct the debate, to maintain, to preserve. So the Supreme Court, right? Supreme Court or the Constitution, the Constitution, the Constitution, they don't have the debate to be able to see how they came about. So the Talmud was when they realized that this great movement that was in Babylonia is going to be forgotten at the time, this Stabaim came to go ahead and to reconstruct, number one, the statement of the Amoraim, and to reconstruct or guess, like almost guesswork, the debates, the reconstruction. The time is a reconstructive work done post Amoraic from the year Halivni has evolved the time. So it was all post, right? It's always post, is a reconstruction work done by the Stamaim, this new category of people. And this went, and he argues with the Shri Ragon with all the traditional accounts. He actually goes not only against Halivdi, because I just told you, there was said that Ibrahim and was Shri Ragon that says a chronology. And he's not only going against the process, he's going against the chronology. He says, no, the Talmud was never like this. The Talmud is a reconstructed one. Reconstructed by, by the Stamaim from the year 540, give or take to the year, the end of the 8th century, beginning of the 9th century. And this is a constructed work. And that's it. And that has an implication. So he writes his theory throughout his theory evolved. It's published in English, right? The formation of Talmud, and was translated by Jeff Rubinstein from NYU. And he summarized as his introduction to Masechet Sanhedrin that was published as a book in itself, showing the process. But what's interesting about Halivni is he takes that to explain the Talmud. And he writes a commentary, a running commentary on the Talmud starting all the Isar from Nashim, but basically all the Talmud goes all the way to Kochim, to the end of it. He only got to Zachim Nachot, and then he got sick and he passed away, so he didn't. But he did a commentary. But he takes truly 180 degrees from Halevi. Not a process at all. Halevi says all the process is very organized, very methodic, and in the year 475, give or take, Halevi says, no, 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 the process starts in the year 540. And it's all looking backwards and reconstructed. And that's why it's a very messy product. And that's why he calls his book called Mikorot Mesorot, Sources and Traditions, to see how many things are difficult in the Talmud because the Stamain did not know how to reconstruct it. And he found a way how to do it. That's basically the idea.